So it's Sunday morning, it's just before 6am and it is drift day. Um, gonna go get something to eat, get the Ranger loaded up and we will be ready to hit the road. So we'll see you out there. First things first, we need to head over to my old dad's house and pick up the car, which is already loaded on the trailer. It's a five ten minute drive from our house, so it shouldn't take long to get there. Okay, good. Finally away from my parents' place after hooking up the trailer. Didn't quite go to plan. Hooked it up and plugged in the trailer lights and they didn't work. Which we found to be the trailer module had blown. We wanted to source a new module out of my dad's car and rewire it into the Ranger. And we are good to go. So that does have to go now. We'll head into Aberdeen, get some fuel and then we'll start the three hour journey down to Drift Land. Thankfully we left with plenty of time this morning so we should just about make a briefing uh, without being late. So as you already know, we're on our way to Driftlawn today. Today is the final event on the Driftlawn calendar for 2017, the New Year's Eve drift practice. Usually it turns out to be one of the busiest days of the year at Driftlawn. They normally run, I'm not 100% sure about today, but they normally run a proximity lane, which is for the more confident drivers who are comfortable getting close to each other and can do lap after lap without spinning or any big mistakes. And normally I would be into the proximity lane, but at the moment, doing my best to keep the car kind of damage free and clean as it's due to be painted and stickered in the next couple of months so I don't really want to be doing too much repair work to the bumpers and things like that so I'll probably be sticking to the kind of open, open practice lens today. So let's say with the proximity queue the risk of getting the car damage is considerably higher uh, just due to the kind of how close everybody gets. I'll try and get a couple of videos of the proximity queue just so you can see how it looks and just kind of how good everyone is. We've just left Dundee so we're over halfway down to Driftland. We should be there in about 45 minutes. We should actually make the briefing with about 5-10 minutes to spare even though we were delayed this morning so we'll see you there.
survived a very wet and windy driftland today. We made it just in time for the briefing with three minutes to spare, so we headed straight in for that once we arrived. After the briefing, we came out and unloaded the car and got ready to go out on the track. So unfortunately, wind noise has rendered most of my videos from the track pretty useless. I'm only using the built-in microphone in my camera. I'll be looking into getting some better video and audio equipment for the next time. So due to the combination of wind noise and my poor kind of equipment setup for vlogging, there isn't a great deal of footage from the track itself. I'll put together what I can to make it as interesting as possible and give you the best kind of look into the day. Just in time for the briefing, we made it with three minutes to spare. We actually had to go to the briefing before we signed on, just so we had time to get there. After the briefing, we come out and tried the car, started the car up, let it warm up and everything. It all seemed good. But after the car got up to temperature, it started having problems with its idle. It wouldn't idle properly, it kept trying to stall. I also noticed that the water temperature gauges weren't working in the car. We recently had the dash out to fit a roll cage to the car, so I had a pretty good idea that the water gauge was probably due to a broken or a disconnected wire. I managed to locate the wire that had been pulled out of the terminals pretty quickly with that and sort that issue. As for the idle issue, it didn't seem to be an easy fix for it at the track, so I kind of had to work around it and just uh, screwed the idle up a little bit to stop it from stalling. And I kind of had to make do with that for the day and just keep an eye on the wideband sensor readings just to make sure that the air fuel ratio wasn't kind of going too lean or anything just to get me through the day. It wasn't the most successful drift days I've ever had but also wasn't the worst. We'll get the car home, we'll get it off the trailer and have a look at the idle issue and try to get that sorted out for next time. I think the next drift day is in about two weeks back at Driftland so we'll probably head down to that and get some more practice in.